Okay, guys, so let's talk about the Mandalorian trailer. Now, this is something that we've been really excited about. Well, I've been really excited about for Disney+. Plus. And I gotta say, like, Disney+, Plus, come November 12th, they're coming out with guns blazing, essentially, with, um, with Disney+. Uh, plus, because when you look at the schedule, you've got that... It, well, honestly, it looks like a lot of stuff that I'm not gonna watch right out the gate. Um... Like, for instance, I'm not gonna watch the Lady and the Tramp live-action remake. Like, that thing just looks bad, and I'm pretty sure that's why it's on the streaming site, is because, oof, this looks really bad. I, let's put it somewhere where we won't get a lot of shit for it. So, that's right. That's why I think they, we, they put the Lady and the Tramp live-action... I didn't even know this was a thing! I swear to God, I didn't know that was a thing! Um, but also, you got the Phineas and Ferb live... Uh, not live-action, excuse me, but Phineas and Ferb movie... Um, uh, you've got the Phineas and, yeah, the new Phineas and Ferb movie, you've got, um, The World According to Jeff Goldblum, some really cool stuff, but The Mandalorian was the one thing that really had me interested. Now, for those wondering what The Mandalorian is gonna be all about, is that what this is, is a series that is gonna follow a lone Mandalorian, um, in a post-Empire-controlled world. This is seven years after Return of the Jedi, and the world is still kind of healing. We haven't gotten to the First Order yet. So, um, the Rebellion is still, like, the New Republic is still a new thing. Um, and this is the out, you know, the, um, Outer Rim. So it's really lawless because they have, there, no, Jabba had control of the Outer Rim's, uh, crime ring. But now there's no Jabba, so there's really all these groups kind of vying for control. So maybe what would be kind of cool to see the Guarvian Death Gangs and uh, Kanja Club. Uh, yeah, maybe that'd be really cool. Is like because um, in the extended lore, the Guarvian Death Gangs escaped the fall of the Empire when Cor when um, you know the Empire fell. They escaped Coruscant and went to the Outer Rim and went to war with Kanja Club, who were the gangs. Like these small-time gangs that have now gotten more power since Jabba's path, uh, death at the hands of Leia. So that'd be really cool. It's like maybe this would be kind of like the uh, Yojimbo or um, the you know the good, the bad, and the ugly, where you have this Mandalorian character playing um, playing uh, both sides of the, of the war between the the Death Gang and and Kenja Club. So, be, so I think that's how it is, and also, I think it's really fun that we have the, he's the Mandalorian, I don't think they've given him a name yet, but the Mandalorian has the gun that Boba Fett used in the Star Wars Christmas special. I find that hysterical. That is, that was Boba Fett's first official appearance, was in the, um, in that animated segment of the, uh, Star Wars Christmas special. And he had that gun, and the Mandalorian is carrying that weapon around. Like, maybe I just didn't notice it up until now. But yeah, he's carrying the weapon from the Christmas special. So I guess that's canon. <laughs> anyway. But what I like to see is that this just looks, like, just dirty and grim. Like, this looks kind of brutal. Like, there's one scene where they cut away from where he basically... Where the Mandalorian... Uh, you basically pulls a scorpion and pulls him into a closing door, and you don't see it, but that dude is, yeah, he is half a man now. That dude is, that dude has lost some weight. <laughs> Not through exercising, let me tell ya. Um, there's also, we get to see the Death Troopers, and it looks like, yeah, the Empire, there are still pockets of the Empire still around, which makes sense, like, especially in the Outer Rim, the Empire would probably still be, like, in its last vestiges, because, yeah, it's not like the Republic is going to reach out and go out into the Outer Rim, so they can't be everywhere in this new Republic that's still being formed, so that stands to reason that they're going to be around, you know, some form of the Empire is going to be around. Um, we also see, what's his name, but I, what I'm really excited for is um, the cast. You've got uh, so many people, like Ronda Rousey, you've got um, oh, what's his name? Um, oh yeah, Carl Weathers. You got freaking Carl Weathers. You have um, oh my god, I'm forgetting his name, but he's a he's a very talented German actor who most of you guys would probably know best as the voice of Professor Pericles from Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated. I know that's like I know he's done way more, but that's the first thing that comes to mind for me is that he was the voice of the evil parrot from uh. <laughs> Uh, he's the evil parrot from uh, 
Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated. So I find that funny, um, and now you can't unthink it like I can. <laughs> but yeah, there was um, that was the number one thing, even more so than some of the Marvel stuff. That this was the one thing I was looking forward to. This trailer did not disappoint me, and also in terms of really good news, after days of you know hinting at it, yes. Um, Ian McGregor has confirmed that he will be coming back as Obi-Wan Kenobi for a Kenobi series at Disney+. Plus. Can, we, can I just say how exciting that is to have a... We may not be getting a Kenobi movie, but a Kenobi TV series. Now, obviously, this is going to take place after the events of Revenge of the Sith, and this is going to follow Kenobi in the 20-year uh, gap between the two, you know, obviously between Revenge of the Sith and New Hope, and... Yeah, that's good. That's a really cool way to look at it. Because now, even with even without a movie, now that um, now with a series, we can really follow Obi Wan in those years of this kind of this post war kind of mindset. And maybe we'll probably get Qui Gon, you know, Liam Neeson back as Qui Gon Jinn. Um, the big question is: Are we going to see Maul in here? Now I know what you're thinking. Why do you care if Maul's in here? I mean, yeah, he showed up in that stupid cameo of, um, in the, that kind of weird cameo in uh, the Han Solo movie, but fuck the Han Solo movie. My thing is, we already had Maul and Obi-Wan face off in Rebels, in the, I think, yeah, third season of Rebels, um, Obi-Wan and Maul faced off, and Obi-Wan killed him, that's in canon. So I'm wondering, are they going to ignore what happened in Rebels and do it as a live-action thing and try to tie in with what we saw in uh, what we saw in Han Solo? I wouldn't put it past Disney, but at the same time, I really dug that episode and that felt like a better end. I don't know. Maybe we'll get Kira uh, from Han Solo in here. Um, it's hard to say, so... I don't know exactly of what they're going to do. I would not put it past them to do a, you know, forget what happened in Rebels and just do something with Maul. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I am looking forward to seeing Obi-Wan in on Tatooine, and who knows, maybe he'll go on, like, other adventures on other worlds. There, were, there was a Young Reader's book series of Obi-Wan during that time, during that 20-year period of him being, like, trying to keep a low-key that he was Jedi and doing all these odd jobs with gunrunners and and um, going off-world. So, who knows? Maybe they'll draw inspiration. I can't remember those the name of those books, but it was an entire book series, essentially. Um, so, that'd, that's pretty neat. Um, that'd be a cool thing to really see them play out with. Uh, but, yeah. I'm looking forward to all the Star Wars stuff, and I'm pretty sure all you guys are too, so you guys tell us in the comments below, what do you guys think of the Mandalorian trailer, the Mandalorian in general, and the news about the confirmation of the Obi-Wan Disney Plus show? Just comment below, let us know, and once again, if, you, if you're new here, remember to Hulk smash that subscribe button and be a part of Earth's My Subscribers, I'm DPZ, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.